Good afternoon and welcome to Omni Bros Live. I'm Omni Dog from Omni Dog's Vault. Here with my special guest, Sherlock Alexi, all the way from down under Australia, and joined just in the nick of time oh. by Luis from Comic Sky 101. Hey. Luis, how you doing, buddy? It's five o'clock somewhere. It's five o'clock <laughs> somewhere. Um Let's see, let me turn my sound up because I can't really hear you that well. Um, Sherlock, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing I'm doing well. I'm finally adjusting to the American time schedule because when I flew over here, it was a like a 13-hour flight from Korea. Um, and then I left I left at 10:15 on Friday morning and arrived at 10:50 on Friday morning, 13 hours later. So, yeah, but it's good. It's good to be here. I picked you up at the airport, and you I did. did my best to keep you awake the you whole did. day. Buying comics certainly helps. I can tell you that. <laughs> I, I took you, um, first we came here, and then mm. I um, uh, took you to Third Eye Comics in Annapolis, where you um, were suitably impressed, I think. Yes, it was great. Yeah, yeah. So, and then we hit rush hour traffic as I took you back to your hotel. So let me ask you, before we get into the plug for IST, what was the most impressive thing? Do you think it was Third Eye Comics mm. or the idiocy of the drivers <laughs> in the Washington DC area? Uh, I think Third Eye was the most impressive, but the most surprising was the idiocy of the drivers. Like I was expecting Third Eye to be impressive and it was really good, but, um, yeah, the, the, the drivers were um, what, to put a bit of an Australian spin on, you would call them like, like fair dinkum idiots. Like they're, fair dinkum idiots. they're just pulling out in the middle of nowhere. It was, it was insane. I've never seen anything like it, to be honest. Like, it, quite shocking. <laughs> yeah, I, I've gotten to the point where I can almost predict what somebody's going to be doing next. I know that if there's any opening that happens like three car lengths in front of me i can say okay this idiot's gonna jack it in front of me <laughs> yeah. right here because there's two inches of space mm. and that's exactly what happened and we had a few close calls but i, I mm. uh, yeah we had lots of close calls in rush hour traffic and i was just like this is what it's like yeah this is what i live with every day rush hour traffic it's just ultra crazy and yeah. he, he got to see he got the scenic route of DC. He yes. got to see. He got to see <laughs> the what, areas you should avoid. <laughs> the areas you should avoid. The nice areas. Yeah. The the uh, area he stayed. He's staying in is very nice. But uh, yeah, I showed I showed him the parts. I said, yeah, you don't want to go here. <laughs> yeah. And then the parts like, okay, you're fine here. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we had a good time, especially at Third Eye Comics, where mm. we got lots of good comic books for Sherlock, including some TKO yeah. Presents books that uh, are not mm. going to be available in Australia. Um, speaking of comic books, mm. though, this episode is brought to you by the fabulous people at InStockTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. Every quarter, there's an Omni Bros Live code. If you're in the United States, you get 50%. Uh, sorry. If you're in the United States and you order $50 <laughs> or more, you get free shipping, fabulous packaging, fabulous customer service. That's insecttrades.com. <laughs> okay. So, Luis, how are you doing? I am good. I'm tired, but I'm pretty good. I'm ready for another show, another day, another dollar, and another week. This is my last day of spring break, so I'm going to try to enjoy it as much as possible before I have to go back to hell. So, Before you go back to hell? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm pretty good, man. It's a, it's another day. It's actually pretty nice out here. Today in Florida. You're coming out here uh, next week, right? Or is it this week? Uh, a date yet to be determined. Oh, you guys haven't locked it down yet? No. Okay, cool. Just let me know. We can okay. get that burger and I owe you. Okay, I'll let you know. I still owe you a burger. We have tons of things to talk about this week, though, in regards to news. Mm. And I saw uh, a movie last night. Yeah, uh, and you're going to give us a spoiler-free review. I'm very excited about this movie because you said it was... Near perfection, didn't you? I love this movie. 
I, I loved it. I love Shazam. It was, I mean, it's kind of spoiling my review, but yeah, we'll get into that later. I, I loved it. Okay. I, it's heads and tails above everything else that DC has done so far. Cool. That's a big call. And it's, you guys are in for a treat when you go see it. I can't wait to see it. Uh, let's see. Matt Miranda ask Sherlock about Ip Man Four. <laughs> Do you guys you know you know Ip Man Jess? I've seen Ip Man One and Two. Yeah, so they're making a four that's coming out with Donnie Yen this oh. year. So he and Bruce Lee are going to San Francisco. Bruce Lee. Yes. So Ip Man was Bruce Lee's teacher in real life. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Oh, they're having an actor play yeah, Bruce yeah, Lee. Yeah. So they're having okay. an actor play play Bruce Lee, and they're going out to San Francisco. But it's going to be the the final one, allegedly. But the, okay. the third one was also going to be the final one. So I don't know if they're going to keep doing it for as long as Donnie Yen wants to do it. But the trailer just came out, and it looks really, really good. Mm, I'm not too okay. sure about here, but they're on Netflix in Australia. So if you want good martial arts movies, check out the Ip Man series. Yeah, Ip Man's great. It's really good. Did you see uh, Sherlock, guys, mm. guys? Did you see the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? The oh yeah, movie? with um, holy shit! Oh, they brought back movie. they brought back Bruce Lee from the dead. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. That's crazy. I, yeah, I almost fell out of my chair when I saw it because he like he looks the part certainly, but when he was like speaking, he's like you know like my hands are like lethal weapons. He wow. sounds like like spot on. Um, <laughs> And for those of you not knowing why Bruce Lee is in a Quentin Tarantino movie in Hollywood, set in Hollywood, is because in, in that time period, um, he was he was known as like the seafood to the stars. So he actually trained like Steve McQueen in Kung Fu, um, a whole bunch of Hollywood people in Kung Fu, taught them how to do fight scenes. And he was actually uh, good friends with um, Sharon Tate um, and Roman, oh. Roman Polanski. And obviously oh. she, she got murdered. Um, and there was, a think apparently, I think a short time where... Um, Roman Polanski thought Bruce Lee might have committed the murder because um, there were some glasses left at the murder scene. And the next day, like, Bruce Lee had lost his glasses. And he said to Roman Polanski, like, have you seen my glasses? And Roman Polanski was like, oh, my God, is he, like, hinting that he's, like, done the murder because oh. he's, like, Bruce Lee is obviously a guy who could take on a bunch of people at one time and yeah. kill them all. But thankfully he didn't. But, yeah, that's why he's in that trailer because he was definitely like on scene and around Hollywood uh, in that time period. So yeah, but I'm looking forward to, um, I'm, lo I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully he has a pretty big role because mm. the more Bruce Lee, the better. <laughs> okay, good. Mm. You should check this out, Jess. It's uh, the new Quentin Tarantino movie, but it's, it's spot on. The actor that they got to play, mm. he, he not only looks the part, like Sherlock mentioned, he has his cadence down yeah. with the way he's too. It is scary mm. how good he nails it. And I think the guy who plays him, I think he hasn't been in a lot of stuff, but he was like in a Street Fighter fan film and it's like uh, Ryu, I think. But he like he has a lot of love for Bruce Lee himself and he's clearly like put the put the effort in. Mm. Um, but there are, funnily enough, there are a few Chinese actors or Hong Kong actors who like make a living out of, they look like Bruce Lee and they appear in films as Bruce Lee, like the guy in It Man. He just looks like Bruce Lee. So they're like, okay, you can be in the films. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, this is turning into the Bruce Lee, uh, the Bruce Lee stream, which is good, but probably not what we talk about. That's okay. We this is the Sunday show. We yeah, talk yeah. about <laughs> talk about anything. There's Make Havoc, hey buddy, and Tyler Blunt, uh, who said, "Look at these maniacs." <laughs> we are a bit maniac. And Tyler Blunt mm -hmm. says, "I want Alex to talk about Gundam." No. Oh my God! No, that's a separate. I won't. I won't torture the entire. For, for I hours. I asked about Gundam on the way to Third Eye, and I got I said, "Give me the short version," and the short version was half an hour. <laughs> and then he's not even getting off into like the different universes of Gundam and stuff. That's from Gundam Origin. <laughs> Sorry. No, it was fine. I'm teasing you. Good. I'm totally teasing you. Um, but kind of kick things off. We've got some news this week, Jess. Yeah, we did. D two E two came out. We've got a lot of uh, a lot of big things that happened over the past week. Uh, arguably, one of the bigger announcements this week was Hickman is back at the House of Marvel. Mm, wow! And this is this should come as no surprise because people were kind of speculating on this for a while. It was rumored for a bit, but Hickman's back, and not only is he writing one X Men book, he's writing two X Men books. So I guess we're going to be expecting something along the lines of his Avengers and New Avengers run. 
where they cross over into a larger story. Uh, but the announcement was made over the past week. Writer Jonathan Hickman will launch two new X-Men titles starting in July, following the end of the current Age of X-Men story, as announced during the publisher's next big thing panel at C2E2 2019. Mm. The two titles are House of X and Powers of X, and will mark Hickman's first work for the publisher uh, since the end of Secret Wars in 2016. Pepe Larraz will draw House of X, with, while R.B. Silva will draw Powers of X. Marty Garcia will color both titles. <clears throat> Oddly, in Powers of X, the X is actually the Roman numeral X, meaning 10, similar to Wolverine's Weapon X designation. Further in the promotional image seen above, below, above, the characters depicted could be from the past, present, or future. And there's like there's a promotional image going on right now. There's a whole bunch of different characters. And there's some deep cut characters, and I'm sure Omar would know more than I do. Uh, Magneto, Apocalypse, Cy Cyclops, things like that. Gold balls. Oh, yes. He's, he's, he's Australian, right? Gold balls? Yeah. Yeah, sure he is. Is he? Yeah, he's I, from I think so. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I, I know. Sorry. Yeah. I sorry. just love the concept yeah, yeah. of the character. Is Gold Balls in there? I'm looking for him now. I don't see. I, I highly doubt it. <laughs> he should be. He totally should be. Um, I mean, this is a no-brainer. This is a slam dunk for Marvel. It's it's Hickman. It's Ackman, It's X Men. Once this is done in ten years from now, um, and it's collected yeah. to an actually coherent story, it's going to be really good. Mm. Yeah, every time I see a Hickman book announced, I'm just like, well, I'm um, look forward look forward to reading on the of that in about seven years once it like finishes in yeah. five, and then another two years to like to end up yeah. in this form. But yeah. it's nice to look forward to. Yeah, Hickman Hickman for me is always better in chunks. He's yeah, a, he's, he's a long term story guy, and if I if I do the monthly grind with Hickman, I just get bored. Yeah, and I forget whatever the hell he's writing because he is such a huge scale writer, and he does plan things out. And his plots are usually really big, but I cannot follow that guy from a month to month. I just can't. It, I don't I just, know how anybody followed Avengers and New Avengers monthly. I couldn't I mean, do it. It was it was a huge undertaking in the in the uh, omnis, and I just couldn't have followed it um, uh, issue by issue. There's just no way I could have done it. I think I read like the first three issues when they when his Avengers came out, and I was just like, "Well, this is great." But yeah, like exactly, you can't. And same with East of West. Like I love reading East of West when it's in like the big chunks. But mm -hmm. when I was doing it month to month, it was just like I couldn't remember what was happening, and then they would bring up things from months ago. Oh yeah, and you're like, "Wait, who's this now? Why is this happening?" But when you read it all collected, it's like oh, it all just comes together so much better. And the good thing about this is that it is Marvel, so Hickman's actually going to finish this. Unlike <laughs> the other books, which, you know, <coughs> yeah. for the end of Manhattan Projects. Well, Faria did get confirmation from him that he is going back and finishing Manhattan Projects. Oh, God, finally. Yeah. That's, an, uh, that's a fangirl's exclusive that she got <laughs> that from Hickman. Finally, man. Oh, my God. Uh, in other news, Jess, do you like marbles? Marbles? No, not marbles. Marvels. Uh, oh, marbles? The Alex yeah. Ross, Kurt Busiek thing? Yes. Uh, yeah, it's one of my all-time favorite comics. Well, you're going to be happy to hear this. Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross will create a new Marvels one-shot as part of the Landmark Series 25th anniversary, as announced during, of course, C2E2, uh, during the Diamond Retailers event. The story will feature fully painted by Ross. Ooh. Yes. I'm way we excited. Mm. I love that yeah. series. Well, we don't get Alex Ross interiors anymore. The guy's mostly just covers because when you're Alex Ross, you could do that and you can make a shit ton of money. Yeah. Um, so the fact that we are getting more interiors by Alex Ross, I'm super excited about this. I'm going to be picking up with a one shot. I know, Jess, you're not a single issue guy. Will you be picking this up? Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You're gonna be putting that on the pull list, huh? Oh, Chris Davis asked a good question. Can us newbies get a rundown on who this Sherlock guy is? <laughs> yes, Sherlock Alexi is a longtime uh, member of the Omnibus Committee. Uh, whatever the hell the name Collective. is. <laughs> Omnibus, the Omnibus Collectors Comic Swap and Communi Community. TM. TM. He's a member, a longtime member of the Facebook page. He's an admin there. 
a longtime friend of mine there. Um, he also helps run the manga group there. Um, so he has been a collected edition. He's from Australia. He's been mm. a collected edition um, guru there, especially with the manga. He's a manga expert and he is uh, from Riley's uh, Facebook community. Mm. And so Sherlock is a uh, uh, longtime member of the Facebook community. And the reason I'm here is I'm, I've traveled over to the US for work. So I had was very luckily um, in the same area that Jess lives in. So that worked out well. It did. It worked yeah, out perfect. It worked I, out really well. I had <laughs> zippity doo -dah to do Friday. <laughs> yeah. And I said, yeah, I'll pick you up at the airport <laughs> and do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, it was good. So, yeah. Um, David. Oh, yeah, David says Farmers for Life. Yeah, because the, the manga subgroup is called um, the Otaku Farm. So because uh, we farm mangoes. Which farm is, mangoes, right. So, yeah. So if you want a good little anime manga subgroup, check it out because um, it's really good. It's a very, very wholesome community <laughs> we've, we've created. Oh, and Joe Chip, you should have seen him in the passenger side of my car oh. when we were driving. Every time oh. we'd make a left oh. turn into oncoming traffic, he was, he was so freaked scary. out. He thought I was turning into <laughs> oncoming traffic and gonna go up on the curb or driving uh, into traffic anytime i would pull out he was like ah, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it feels terrible it literally feels like you're gonna drive into oncoming traffic and when you sit in the front like you i sit in you the sit passenger side which is where i would normally drive right. so it feels like i'm sitting in some kind of future car where you don't <laughs> there's no controls <laughs> so it's a little bit a little bit freaky i almost get hit crossing the road because in Australia, it's like you look left, right, left, and then cross. Right. Whereas, obviously, if you do that here, you'll be like, yeah, no, fine, and then boom, you'll get hit. So, you just got to be mindful. And also tipping, right? We don't tip in Australia. So, um, Jess has been very good in helping me to uh, remember to tip people. <laughs> Who do you tip? How much? What's appropriate? <laughs> um, so that's been good because I, I definitely don't want to uh, offend anyone and just pay the bill flat and go, see you later. And they're like, bloody Australians are so can rude like it's yeah we got to the hotel i'm like okay you gotta tip the bellboy you gotta tip the guy that takes the luggage to your room you gotta leave a tip for the housekeeper uh you gotta tip your lift driver <laughs> so yeah it, it's been it's been uh, a lot of mental gymnastics trying to remember that so i'll probably remember it just before i get home and then um yeah <laughs> Oh, and there's ETL. ETL, when I put this sweater on, I definitely thought of you. Thank you for noticing it. Um, I, did, uh, I didn't get dolled up a little extra for Sherlock. Uh, I had to admit that this is primarily for my wife, uh, <laughs> that uh, I've now lost enough weight that I can fit back into some of my nicer sweaters. Ooh. And this is a lightweight sweater because it's only going to get to be about 60 degrees today. So it's just a light sweater. Uh, but thank you for noticing, ETL. You're good about that, and I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, great. Good job, Jess. Thank you, buddy. Uh, <clears throat> so, oh, wait, wait. Now, now my ADD just kicked in. So hold on. Is everywhere else in the world where they drive, like on the – is that how it is everywhere else in the world? Or is right. so recently, recently the, so the countries I've been to, so from Australia, you drive on the left. Indonesia, you drive on the left. Um, Malaysia, you drive on the left. Vietnam, you drive on the right. Uh, Japan, you drive on the left. Korea, you drive on the right. Here, you drive on the right. Um, UK, you drive on the left. In Europe, you drive on the right. I'm not too sure about South America um, at all. I feel like Canada probably drives on the left because of Joe, the US heritage. Joe Chip, you're in Canada. What side of the right road do you guys yeah. drive on? <laughs> um, I have no idea about Russia or Africa. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems to kind of like 50 50 um but malaysia used to be like colonized by the british so maybe that's why they mm -hmm. drive on the left um yeah it's a bit a bit, uh, bit hard to kind of pick but it's it seems to be 50 50. i i have to admit that if i went to a country where they drove on the left Canada is Canada's the right, right side. There you okay. go. So it doesn't make any sense. I can visit. I can visit Canada then. Yeah. Uh, if I visited Britain, I'm pretty sure I would either do a tour group or hire a driver. I, there's just no way my brain could handle it. Oh, it's if my brain yeah. can't handle manga, how am I going to handle <laughs> driving on the left side of the road? There's just it's just not happening. There's a lot more incentive because you'll get hit by a car <laughs> if you drive the wrong way. You see pretty quickly. Uh, I just don't see. Oh, hey. 
the omnibus collector himself. What's going on, bearded boy? Making my lunch. My niece and nephew are here playing. Uh, what are y'all playing? Roblox? I can't hear him. You, you can't hear me? Oh, I can hear them. <laughs> <laughs> here, let me bring it closer to me. I don't hear him. Do you can't have the microphone close to your face, your mouth. On, one, one second, let me grab something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's that microwave, but no kettle. <laughs> so island countries are the left, and it's mainly countries belonging to the Commonwealth, except Canada. Hmm. That's weird. I wonder why Canada didn't... Why Canada changed it. Oh, well, how very weird. Was it you I was talking to about Australia having a queen? Who was I talking to? I was talking to someone. Australia has a queen? You know... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, now I can't even remember who I was talking to. Someone was really shocked. Oh no, sorry, sorry, it was sorry, it was Adonis and uh, Nelson who I met yesterday. Yeah, I was explaining how so Australia is um like our head of state is still the British Queen, Queen Elizabeth. Oh, okay. So, she, so she's on all our money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they did I, they did. I was trying to explain I that. They had your own queen. No, 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 no. We don't have we don't have well. She is our queen. Yeah. But um yeah. And if you ask your um local Australian member of parliament, if you're an Australian viewer, uh, you can get a free portrait of the Queen uh, from your member of Parliament, which people didn't know about until very recently, and then everyone was asking their members of Parliament for the free Queen picture, no. just because it's a cool thing. So, like, people took it to work and things like that. So, I should get one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Canada as well. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Same Queen. It's the same Queen. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew the the queen was uh, that you did have Britain's queen. Yeah. Um, uh, hey, Jess. Yeah. Is your favorite Marvel villain Carnage? Is my favorite Marvel villain Carnage? Yes. Uh, my favorite Marvel villain. Uh, I think my well, no, Venom's a good guy now. Well, Venom's a good guy. What's that? Venom's a good guy now. The reason I ask is because Marvel Comics has announced Absolute Carnage. Oh. A new limited series that focuses on Cletus Cassidy, better known as the symbiote serial killer Carnage. Written by Donny Cates and art by Ryan Stegman, Absolute oh, Carnage, Cassidy on a hunt. Yes. Yeah, it's a buy. For everyone who has ever worn a symbiote and every symbiote itself, leading up the story, Carnage back, uh, the backup will feature will appear in individual titles a la hunt for wolverine cletus cassidy is back and he is deadlier than he's ever been kate said in a video announcement absolute carnage encompasses every single character who has ever worn a symbiote and every symbiote that has ever been going all the way back to when peter found the black suit going from there to maximum carnage to venomize to everything everyone is a target i'm in yeah, I'm in too. Mm. That sounds really cool. Who is my favorite Marvel villain? <laughs> I, you know, I'm not in the comic book room. We're out here in the diner booth, mm. so I can't look around at all my action figures. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it's a Spider-Man villain. It it would have been Venom, except now he's a good guy. Um, um, Raven's a villain. Huh? Raven's a good villain. Hmm. I like Magneto. Magneto's my favorite. Part. Magneto's good. I like Dr. Doom. Yeah, Dr. Doom's a, a little complicated. I, mm. I like how he's, I like how he, they worked him into being like Valeria's Uncle Doom. <laughs> yes. Uh, Especially Hickman's are, Doctor. Hickman has just a way with writing Dr. Doom. He nails oh, yeah. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is, this, is this better, guys? Oh, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Can you okay. hear him now, uh, Luis? Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh huh. We can hear you. Can you hear Riley? <laughs> no, I can't hear Riley. <laughs> we'll tell you what Riley says if it's noteworthy. That's fine. Like a, like a personal a problem. Right now. I don't know. I can't hear him. That's weird. He's just eating a sandwich now. 
Tell Luis he smells bad. Some people people are listing off their favorite villains. Doctor Doom, Mr. Sinister, Doc Ock, Barracuda, Barracuda. Wow. Barracuda. Yeah. I think okay. I, I will say that in Jessica Jones, the Netflix series, mm. Purple Man is the most frightening villain uh, on television. Uh, to me, he was absolutely terrifying. That's you. Well, that's because David Tennant is a boss. <laughs> yeah, well, he is great. He is a boss. Yeah, he, he I mean the great. whole concept of that villain freaked me the freak out. Mm. Hey, mm -hmm. Jess. Yeah, I've been reading this series lately, and I you might enjoy it. <laughs> I can't hear him. Ooh, uh, recommendation. He's giving me a recommendation, Louise. Um, it's, Matt Miranda says the Plutonian. It's slightly slightly older. Uh, maybe about from the mid late late nineties late late nineties early two thousands. It's very like Dungeons and Dragonsy. Like, oh no, we lost right now as well. Why'd you mute him? I'm trying to figure out why. I didn't do it on purpose. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out. Why. Okay, Riley, wait a sec. He back, muted you, so I missed what you just said. Oh no, he's on mute again. Just sec, Riley. <laughs> <laughs> Luis is fucking with you. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out why I can't hear him. That's why. Well don't mute him for us. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. That's great. He's still talking. Poor guy. Oh, wait, let me see if I can. No, I I because I unmuted go. myself and then oh. Luis muted me again. Okay. <laughs> So I was like, I'll just wait. So anyway, so this series, it's, you know, magic and sorcery and dungeons and dragons and monsters and wizards and all that kind of stuff. And people have like control over these things. Okay. And they're fighting against each other in, in duels, if you will. And um, so there, there's like tournaments and all that kind of stuff. It's really exciting. There's, you know, ties to mythology, specifically a lot to do with Egyptian mythology. It's really cool. Um, I see what you're doing. <laughs> I've I've What's been reading Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, yeah, he's talking about Yu-Gi-Oh. Manga <laughs> about playing. Uh, oh. about playing but I was trying to sell it in a way that shows that that Jess is just uh, against manga in general. <laughs> it can be the most uh, interesting concept to him. It's too hard to read backwards <laughs> for me. Just read it forwards, and then you'll know what happens at the end first. Oh, you guys, <laughs> David Codd picked up on it. Yeah, I was gonna say it. I was like, it sounds like you. When he said Egyptian, I was like, it's definitely, it's definitely. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh, some really? ridiculous, ridiculous panels in that. Like I posted one on the manga group the other day, where one of the characters, Kaiba, is telling the main character Yugi. He's like, uh, nothing is infinite. It's just God's illusion. <laughs> And I was like, what am I reading? <laughs> While they're playing card games. Like, yeah. And then he's like, I will defeat God with a card game. <laughs> it's quite ridiculous. Um, but also, like, it, it takes itself seriously enough that, like, it, it doesn't seem like farce, but it's still very farcical at the same time. It's very... Like, you, you get very into it. Like, yeah. I've been, like, reading it, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. And then all of a sudden, I remember, like, they're just playing cards. Yeah, like, it, it's kind of, like, it's so insane. Like, it kind of comes back around in itself and then, like, becomes serious again. Like, it's so serious about being crazy but takes its own in insanity so seriously that, like, you take it seriously as well, even though it's completely batshit. It's, yeah, it's certainly something. <laughs> the, uh, the, most recent duel, the most recent duel I was reading had... Um, one of the bad guys uses a counterfeit God card and God does not like this. So it strikes down the guy like lightning comes down and strikes him down. And then the other person's like, you're a phony. You're not the person you said you are. You're using a fake card. And, and it's like, it's so hardcore, but then you realize they're still just playing with cards. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's card core. <laughs> That's great. And r rather, rather infamously, Jess, in the uh, the US version of the anime, they because um, it was for kids, they edited out guns. So in the, in the original Japanese one, they'd have like you know the the henchmen of the bad guy, you know, pointing guns at the heroes, um, and they just edited out the guns. So the guys are pointing at people like this with, with their, their fingers. fingers. Yes. God, so weird. you have to come with us. <laughs> people just okay, we'll do it. Um, and instead of killing people, they said they send them to the shadow realm, which is actually not a bad change. But 
Um, it's part of a kind of an influence. Oh, it's terrifying. In, yeah, yeah. It, like they did the same with the One Piece anime. The character who smokes all the time, and they he, like he uses lollipops. <laughs> well, and then that Sanji <laughs> we uses news. lollipops. But oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but the character news, Luis. This what? Is, do we have any more news? This is taking a deep train ride off into manga land. <laughs> and I'm dying here. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I think that uh, the, the uh, idea of showing Jess. Um, the last thing that I have here. Make it last 10 minutes. <laughs> huh? Make it last 10 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> uh, the last thing that I have here is the Toy Story 4 trailer was released. I don't know if any of you guys saw that or what your Ooh. thoughts on it are, but that was a huge part of a lot of people f that grew up in my generation's childhood. And I'm wondering why the hell are we having a Toy Story 4 movie in the first place? Because the third one ended it perfectly, but you know. Yeah, look, I'm on the same page with you. I feel like Toy Story has been one of the few Pixar franchises where they can kind of go back to the world. And especially like the, the time they've kind of like left between each one has always like, like, it's, like you're right, it's like growing with the audience, which is why probably Toy Story 3 like hit you know, all of this, like a freight train. Yeah. Um, and so Toy Story 4 just kind of feels like going back to the world, like just that one more time that they shouldn't have because you're at like three was such a good ending. And then it also seems to be like four is about like the, the internal logic of the Toy Story films, like what makes a toy like, and it like Toy Story doesn't need to be about like, if you t like get a coat on oh, a coat hanger, so if you get like a pipe cleaner and draw a face on it, it comes alive and that's a toy. What is a toy? Like that's, that's not really like why people like their films. It's because they like the idea of your beloved childhood action figures, like having their own lives and your relationship to that. Right. Rather yeah. than like what, what makes the toy a toy. And yeah, I just, I feel like it's, I'm just not excited for it. I'm at not all. excited for it at all either. And I'm going to come right out and say it. Toy Story two and three made me sob i Same. sob sob especially in toy story 2 when they leave jesse in the mm. side of the road in a cardboard box i totally sob with that because she was all Spoilers. like she's being rediscovered from under the bed i sobbed with that and i do not want to see i'm not as as much as i want to go on the slinky dog ride at at uh, disney world I'm, I'm totally not up for Toy Story 4. Yeah. I mean, for me, it doesn't, you don't need it. You really don't. It's a good send off. Three was a perfect send off. Mm -hmm. I guess that there's an argument online, people saying that three was the ending of Andy's story, but we still technically haven't gotten the ending of Woody's story. And I'm like, ah. Well, it's the same thing, right? Like, you know, yeah. what I mean? it's like, like the whole, the whole thing is about, I mean, apart from the other stuff, like it's about Woody um, and Andy and also like, you know the like the whole idea of like Woody's a cowboy and Buzz is like a spaceman, which is you know like a a throwback kind of you know to the like how America pop pop culture changed. Mm -hmm. Like had the westerns and now it's all sci-fi. Yeah, and that like you know that's a good way of looking at through a kid's eyes. But like Woody Woody is like a character in my mind at least in relation to Andy because he's Andy's toy, right? So like Andy's story is over, and it felt yeah. like a perfect kind of thing. Like I don't need to see Woody get like. You know, like yeah. three years down the track or whatever. Like it's right. You know, it's not like Star Wars where I feel like you could have like the next generation and then the next generation, like, or maybe even they could have just done it four, but like spun off in a totally new direction, like made it about kids these days, like how it's kind of old kids these days and their toys. I'm like, what that's like for them rather than continuing with the original cast. Like, yeah, I mean, and not only that, like I, w I was a bit high when I watched the trailer. Shocking. Uh, <laughs> And I fell down the rabbit hole of like what constitute as a toy, what makes something a toy? Because if a spork can come to life, then what's stopping it from like a jar of peanuts or something like that with a smiley face on it becoming a toy? It it fucks with it fucked with me for like two solid hours. <laughs> <laughs> what about Legos then? Like right? Like it's a yeah. like, individual Legos the toys, or is it when it's together, or like <laughs> it's too much? Yeah, so like, like what constitutes like is it the power of the child that breathes life into these things <laughs> like I, it, it just it messes with me a little too much and I, I don't know I don't need it I don't I'm gonna see it just because I see about every, every movie that comes out now for some stupid reason um, but I, I have very little interest in this. I don't think I even want to see it I think I'm gonna take the other movie. stance and oh. I'm gonna say that I'm it's I'm gonna down look nice at least it's Pixar mm. You're I'm down very, with it? 
I'm very down. I'm going to go see this movie happily. I think if it gets good reviews, like if, like say if all you guys went to see it and you said, oh, it's actually surprisingly good, then I'd, 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 no, I'd, no, I'd probably go, go see it. it. Yeah. These but guys are way up for it. Here's it's so Key and Peel, great. I, I'm down for that. I'm gonna see what they have to bring to to these characters. Mm. But also the the creepy factor that came in when when they went into that what like a antique store or whatever, and there's all those dolls. I'm so down for that. Like I I don't I don't even care. Like they could have. It doesn't have to be a Toy Story movie. It that just looks cool. But um yeah, I'm down. I'm, I'm gonna watch it happily. And it's not cars, and that's all that matters. Yeah, true. I, I, I'm waiting, waiting for Cars Four or whatever, whenever, whenever they need to like pump more <laughs> out. But I do, I do kind of miss like I, I really liked it when Pixar kind of had like Toy Story was the one that got the sequels because it was kind of like you know the top tier one and it worked really well. And all the other ones were just kind of one offs. Like I, I watched Finding Dory for the first time recently, and I was like, this was fine, but. Like also, if I'd never seen it, like I would have been fine because yeah. the first one's so good. Yeah, and it's, it seems to me like Pixar are kind of doing less and less. Like I could be wrong, but it feels like they're doing less and less like one-off originals and more going back to the world. Uh, I never saw Impossibles too. Is that good? Oh, Incredibles! Incredible. Um, without getting too political, it kind of depends on how you feel. I think about Brad Bird's politics because he's he's like very like if you if you look at it the lens of like about how special people are special and like the government shouldn't interfere with them which is like kind of his his own political take on it oh my it god you, i have to have a political <laughs> view going into this movie I know, well, no no you don't have to but i was aware of that so because i knew that's how he thinks it kind of colored my own experience whereas i think like if you were a kid and saw it, and like, look, they're probably, <laughs> they're probably I like the best. I like to. That we're okay. going to get for a long time, and it, like, it looked amazing. I would definitely recommend seeing. Okay. It, but uh, but yeah, like even then, I still think the first one was probably the best. Because, yeah. Um, the sorry, the sorry. First, no, you're good. The first one was is. The first one is head and shoulders mm. uh, for me, a hundred percent better than the second one. Uh, I enjoyed the second one though. I thought it was pretty fun. It was a good, uh, solid sequel. But I do kind of miss the days of when Pixar was doing uh, just the standalone films. What was the last one we got? Uh, was it Inside Out? Matt, uh, Inside good Out dinosaur. Was fantastic. I think Inside Out was fantastic. The Good Dinosaur might have actually been, but that was like that flew under everyone's radar because it was. I don't know. Was, I thought Inside. I thought Inside Out was. An unbelievably psychologically mm. complex, brilliant movie. I discussed oh. that movie for like three sessions with my therapist. It, was so <laughs> good. it is really good, and like that would actually be one they could do a great sequel for, right? Because if you just wait till like the girl is a teenager, or even just have a completely yeah. different person, like if you hit those periods in your life where you're experiencing a lot of emotions and you're developing as a person, like there's a lot of rich ground there to yeah. kind of look into, but. Again, like I, I would rather maybe see Inside Out two over Toy Story four, but maybe I'd rather just see a completely original um, thing as well. Yeah, well, it seems like we're getting the sequels from Pixar and Disney's in-house animation studio is the one that's doing like the original stuff. Like I love Moana. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, right. I still need to see that. Um, Zootopia. We're getting we're getting Frozen yeah. two though. Zootopia was brilliant. I love Zootopia. Zootopia. I love Zootopia. Yeah. Um. Sorry, Ryan just said we're getting Fro Frozen two as well, which is very true. Except Which, it looks like it looks like Final Fantasy now. Like it, it looks. <laughs> I I told my no, wife. Frozen, I told Frozen Megan. had a real troubled uh, production. It was it was a it was a dumpster fire for those people. They got their budget cut at the last minute. Originally, oh. Frozen was supposed to be a fully animated film. Um, and you can find stills online, uh, and you can find like animated shorts that they did and stuff. People have posted it online. Mm. And there are whole segments of the film that were cut because of the budget constraints. Like there was actually segments that deepen the relationship between the two sisters where it actually made them feel like they were actually real sisters but they oh, cut wow. all that stuff Shit. because they got the, yeah because in the middle of them making it disney came in and said yeah we're cutting your budget how do you cut the budget of the sequel of one of the biggest movies disney's first had? one this is the first one we're talking about the oh, first all one. right the first one sorry i thought you were talking about the sequel oh because no, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh. oh shit! Well, now I'm really hyped. Yeah, no, I, I loved Frozen. I thought it was great. So I'm I'm really keen for the second one. But I think you are right. Like the the Walt Disney Animation Studios, like actual studio. I don't know if they poached, like well, not really poaching because it's all the same company now, right? But I don't know if they moved a bunch of people from Pixar over there. I feel I feel like they did. Like in my head, I think they 
I remember reading somewhere that they moved a few of the production staff and that's why Walt Disney Animation has put out more like original ones. Yeah. But I could be wrong. And well, that's about it for news. You guys want me spoiler free, Shazam? You want to do yeah. it real quick? Please. Yeah. Okay. So, Jess, do you like Goonies? Sure. You like Monster Squad? Sure. You like Superman? I love Superman. Then you're going to love this movie. It's fucking great. It's so damn good. They have a home run on their hands here. It, it's far and away uh, DC's best film that they've they've made so far. I I think it's better than Wonder Woman. I think it's better than Aquaman. I, I enjoyed it more than I did in Infinity War last year. I dug the hell out of this. It was oh, so yeah, great. Right? Wow. What makes it so fun? It's the fact that they're able to balance out the tone of humor. There, there are so many different tones of this, and they're able to, the director of this is able to absolutely balance out every single one of them perfectly here. There are elements of horror. There are elements of humor. There are elements of something that you would see in 80s movies. This feels like something that would come out of the 80s, but with an aesthetic of today. And it's so goddamn good. It's so much fun, guys. I, I can't wait for you guys to go see Shazam. It's, it's really, it's up there as one of my new top five favorite, um, favorite hero movies. And I, I'm, I'm saying this as somebody that, I grew up watching the Richard Donner films, the Richard Donner Superman stuff. Yeah. And I can totally see this generation of kids watching this and going, that's their Richard Donner Superman. Oh, that's great. Wait, this, this has to be said. Make Havoc hates everything, and he gives Shazam nine and a half out of ten. <laughs> that's huge for Make Havoc. <laughs> that is huge for Make Havoc. I'm just happy that it's, DC decided to stop making shitty movies. It, it's I really it's hard for me to do this stuff without really spoiling. But the biggest thing about this for me is that they establish who Billy Batson is as a character, and where in other movies he gets his powers, he transitions into being a great guy right off the bat. No, he ha he has an actual character arc. From beginning to the end of the story, if they wanted, they didn't have to do another sequel to this. He starts out one way, he ends up at the film another way. Mm. And for those of you comic fans out there, this is probably the closest to the Jeff Johns interpretation of the character. Mm. Where Billy Batson is, he's a troubled youth. He's a kid that's been on the street, he, but he has a good heart, ultimately. Mm -hmm. And he's a good guy deep down. And they capture that perfectly. There are scenes in here where Billy deals with, with some things, and they, they update the origin for more modern audiences. There are scenes in here that are genuinely just heartbreaking. They are really heartbreaking, where you heard people in the theater, they were tearing up, like genuinely tearing up. There's one particular scene in here where Billy discovers something, and it just rips your heart out. It really does. and you understand why Billy is the way that he is. And that is why I think this movie works so well, because unlike a recent Marvel movie, there's an actual character arc in this. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a bit too harsh on Infinity War there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, Billy actually grows in this. He gets his powers. He starts having fun with his powers. He starts learning how to use his powers and he discovers my powers are actually kind of dangerous and they could, and that, that was one of my main flaws of Captain Marvel where Captain Marvel, she just got her powers out of fucking nowhere. She just got blasted with radiation or whatever. And she's like, oh cool, I can do all these magical cool things because the script wants me to do. No, you have fun while he's discovering his powers. And it's that, brilliant brilliant moment of you going along with these characters and seeing what he can do and just having a blast and zachary levi there are scenes in here where i swear to you he looks like he came off of an alex ross painting he looks spot on in certain scenes for the character and he nails it he 100 percent nails it it's so difficult 
for an adult to capture that childlike wonder and to capture that aesthetic of what it's like to be a child and then all of a sudden have these superpowers, but you're an adult now and they nail it. They 100% nail it. The humor in this where, yeah, okay, I'm going to admit, we're the, in certain, again, we're going to compare this to Marvel because it, you know, that's, it is what it is. Where in certain Marvel films, the humor feels tacked on and forced. It's natural here. And it works within, with what's going on in the script of the film. And it works with what's going on with the characters. And it works with what's going on as the kids. Um, the standout for me, though, believe it or not, is, and I'm blanking on the kid's name. He was an it. He plays the, the young, the kid with the crutch. Crutchy. <laughs> Crutchy. Crutchy. Okay, we'll call him Crutchy for this. No, I'm not calling him Crutchy. Um, <clears throat> he is hilarious in this film. And he kind of is, he's kind of um, Billy's sidekick throughout the whole movie. And he nails it. Every single one of the films, he nails it. There are certain twists in here that I'm not going to give. They do. Basically, there's a, there's a moment towards the end of the film, I'm being very vague, where... I was super excited about it and I wasn't hundred percent sure if they were going to do it. And when they did the whole theater erupted clapping, this is going to make so much fucking money. Okay. I, that, I can't that's wait. My next question, because this thing was tracking mm. to make low dollars, like 50 to 70. It's got nothing but positive, a hundred, almost a hundred percent positive reviews like yours. Do you think this thing can actually have a big opening weekend now? Uh, it's hard to say because remember Captain Marvel was also tracking for 80 million and it ended up breaking 150 million. Originally this was tracking for 40 million, but DC has a hit on their hands and they've been marketing it and they were smart about their marketing. Hmm. I, th I honestly can see this breaking 100 million opening weekend. Positive word of mouth online has been fantastic fantastic for it okay. and the thing that it's competing against is the fact that it's a dc movie and yeah aquaman and wonder woman have kind of cleared the way for that stuff where it's like oh, okay they're actually getting the ball rolling um but there's still kind of that slight stigma where it's like eh, it's a dc movie and you know with the general movie going audience guys if you are out there and you have that give this a chance it's it's i i love this film i cannot wait to go see this again in theaters and they ha they genuinely have a really good hit on their hands and if this is the direction that dc is going then i am in i am 100 percent in. i'm somebody that i'm getting burned out on this marvel cosmic comic universe film universe where everything has to be fucking tied into no it doesn't not everything has to be fucking tied into another movie i'm getting tired of this <laughs> Well, I think, I think you're right, though, because I think that's the thing DC has been struggling with for a while, right, is, like, how to differentiate themselves from Marvel. And they're, I think, I guess, like, their initial mistake was, like, Marvel is positive, so we go negative. But I think what they're doing, and it looks like the same with the um, uh, Joaquin Phoenix, like, Joker, right? Like, they're just like, hey, one or even with um, Aquaman and Wonder Woman, they just give a talented director their character and just say, like, do whatever you want. It doesn't have to match the same style. It doesn't have to match, right. sorry, um, style and tone. Um, and that's really good. And I'm definitely like, I'm definitely here for that. And like, like you said, um, it was really good to hear you compare it to Richard Donner's, um, Superman. Cause like, if you think about it, a kid who can become Superman by saying a word essentially is like, that should be like a billion dollar idea. Like yeah. there's, there's a reason like right in the thirties, like, or in forties, it outsold Superman because right. it's just like, it's like Superman, but, but you, the kid can also be Superman. Like that's such a good idea. So it, it's good to hear it gets carried off well. Let me ask this question. Um, Shazam is a tertiary character and in DC's universe. Does it suffer? Will it suffer the same stigma of being attached to, as a DC property as, say, Aquaman or Batman? Do people associate Shazam with DC as much as, say, us fanboys do? Will people just see Shazam and go, oh, Shazam, what, what's that about? Or will they say, oh, Shazam's a DC character? Like they would say, oh, super, like everybody knows Superman's a DC character, Batman's a DC character. But do they know to say Shazam's a DC character? Here, I, 
I think the general movie going audience is not look they're not as astute as we are in this universe yeah. so yeah. I think a lot of people are just going to go in and see oh this looks like a fun superhero movie that i could actually take my kids to right um, <laughs> right yeah because, because you know if you if we're, we're coming up again where let's say okay rocket raccoon where if you go up to somebody on the, the on the side of the road and you go hey do you know who shazam is a lot of people will probably think that shaquille o'neal movie from like the 90s <laughs> you know <laughs> good um, pull. good pull no, it's oh, true. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's so, right. I, I think there will be genuinely, I think there's going to be genuinely a few people in the audience that are going to go into this and go, oh, shit, this is part of the DC universe. Yeah. And what I'm happy about this is that it is, there's references to the DC universe, but it's not dependent on you knowing 10 films or 20 films in the past for you to enjoy this. Hmm. Or it's not dependent on you knowing, oh, this is connected to this, or this is connected to this, so you could enjoy it. It's a standalone film. It holds its own. Yes, there are references to the greater DC universe. Um, is but it you true Ryan Reynolds as Green Lantern makes a guest appearance in it? No. No, it's not true. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you don't really need to know that. I And look... We, uh, we've seen a whole bunch of, we're 21 films into the Marvel Universe already. We know what the, we know, we know what we're getting in these films. We know the tropes and Marvel really hasn't deviated from it. And that's part of the reason why I like Deadpool. This is their version of Deadpool. Hmm. Oh, okay. Because it takes the tropes that we know so well and we know what they are and it turns it on its head. And there's one scene in particular where... I went, finally, finally, somebody caught this and they made it a joke. And it works with the film. I, it, it's, it really is their version of Deadpool because it, it really just shits on all these like DC, on all these superhero movie tropes. And it makes it fun. And, and it makes it just a blast all the way through. I, I'm telling you guys, I am super excited for this to come out. I'm going to go see it again opening night. I, I am okay. Hyped. Mm, that sounds great. I think, yeah, and I think it's like people people want, I mean, I love Marvel's movies, but it's like you you can have too much of a good thing, right? Like right. you just kind of, you get, like you said, you get kind of used to it and you get like, I'm going to enjoy Endgame, but also like I'm kind of, I've got expectations in my head of what will happen and I'm not really expecting any subversion. So it's really good that DC are finally kind of like. This sounds like, like it's so different mm. than everything else that I can't wait to see it. It just sounds like so very different mm. than everything else. It's a breath of fresh air for me who I'm getting tired of these. I'm getting, to, uh, look, I'm getting tired of the superhero movies. I think the strongest superhero movies that have come out in the last few years are just the single hero focused films where they're in their own self-contained stuff. Your Logan's, your Deadpool, and now Shazam. I think those are the strongest films for a reason. Mm -hmm. And this is one of them. I, I can't wait. This is going on easily in my top five for the end of the year. Uh, see, this is why you're a fake fan. I could have a superhero movie every week, a 52 week year. I, there was nothing when I was growing up. You've been spoiled, man. I want superhero TV, superhero comics, superhero movies. I want superhero in my eyeballs at night. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's my. I mean, if look, if I had to slap a number on this, I. The only, the only problems that I have is, you know, the villain's a little bit, and eh, not the greatest villain, but you do get, you understand where the villain's coming from. You do, <clears throat> you do feel for him. Um, and the CGI is a little bit dodgy in certain spots, but that's just because they, they had, pro they had a small budget for this. Uh, if I were to score it, I'd say 9.5 out of 10 for me. Like this, wow. is, this is the most I've heard you rave about a movie in a long mm. time. It's I, I loved it. I lo this is my Spider Verse so far this year. <gasps> Whoa! I, I, I really did. I love this film, and I can't wait to go see it again. Zachary Levi is he he is Shazam. Like he is the character where I was talking about two weeks ago. Where I'm like, eh, I don't think Captain Ke I don't think Brie Larson was right for this character. I'm like, he dead on. They and could not have picked a better actor. And it, and it's nice for him to finally get like a big role because ever yeah. since like Chuck, he's kind of been like. I mean, I love Thor Ragnarok. Like, it's, like, easily one of my favorite Marvel superhero films. But I felt really bad that he was, like, dispatched in Thor Ragnarok as... Um, no, no, no. He's Fandral in, uh, 
in yeah. the films. And he got dispatched without even a word. And I honestly thought it was a joke. Like, I'm like, oh, he's going to come back. I don't even <laughs> remember him in Ragnarok. Yeah, no, he, he literally, he's standing there. And then Kate Blanchett shows up and, like, throws a spear at him and he dies without saying oh. anything. <laughs> and I, I thought it was a joke because I was like, oh, there's no way they'd kill off, like, Fandral. Like, they wouldn't poor Zachary Levi come in, get his makeup, costume on, and then, like, kill him off. <laughs> and, yeah, they did. So, um, and he, he wasn't even Fandral in the first film. He was in the second one. And he I think he tried out for the first film and they gave it to someone else and then that person couldn't come back so they gave it to him in the second one and you think like being a supporting character in the MCU is like you know that's a good gig but yeah it never really got anywhere for him and he hasn't really been able to show up anywhere else so I'm like he seems like a really good dude and it's really good that like good. He's, he's been able to kind of like mm-hmm. like nail it that's really good make havoc you're the best <laughs> you're the best make havoc <laughs> Uh, Derek Chow, is it better than us? Yeah, I liked it better than us. And you saw us this week? Yeah, but us, is, I'm not going to get into that here because that's another 20 minute conversation. Oh, right. I'm say, no spoilers, no spoilers for yeah, us. Yeah, I still need to see Get oh, Out, man. man. I suck. <laughs> I suck at everything, man. <laughs> no, I haven't no. seen Umbrella Academy. Ah. I haven't seen Star Trek Discovery. I, uh, I suck. I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not in April and see nothing but television. I'm not too far behind you, Jess. I, I've not watched a lot of stuff, but uh, have you seen *Umbrella uh, Academy*? I watched three episodes of it, but honestly, like, I just I kept watching it, thinking like how different it was from the comic. And I know a lot of people are like this that they liked it better, but I'm not in that camp. Like, I mm-hmm. like the comic better, and I like the aesthetic of the comics better than seeing real people, and. Uh, I'm sure one day I'll be able to check it out, but like I'm, I've not watched barely any of the Marvel Netflix stuff, any of the mm-hmm. other Marvel stuff, basically anything that came out on uh, streaming services. I've watched the first season and then nothing else uh, <laughs> for those. I watched like one season of Flash, one season of Arrow, and that's it. I have, I'm at least caught up on movies. And Megan and I hooked up with one of those uh, subscription services, like for AMC, so we can go oh, good. Uh, as many times as we want or whatever for twenty bucks a month. So I watched Captain Marvel the other night, and I, I really enjoyed that. Um, of course you did, because it's fun. <laughs> it is fun. It's, it it felt like a movie that was from the '90s. It felt like a '90s action flick. Um, and I, I really enjoyed that. And I'm looking forward to seeing Shazam. But I, I think that, um, number one, I, I threw out earlier, I'm happy that DC has finally decided to stop making shitty movies. <laughs> and I say that both in jest and seriously, because in jest, like, yeah, it's a funny comment. But, like, it's it's like, Alex, you said that they, they were pushing too hard to be like, if Marvel's going light, then we're going to go dark. And they finally decided to step away from that idea of like, we have to be dark. We have to be more serious. We have to do this. It's like, no, what you have to do is make movies that the audience is going to enjoy. And so finally they're letting their people do that job and do it successfully. So I've been looking forward to Shazam since that first trailer came out. I was uh, iffy on it when we were seeing pictures of costumes and stuff. Right. It looks kind of uh, janky, but I yeah. feel like that's kind of part of it is that it, it, it has that kind of, funky you know fake turbo man look to it um but yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to it and my my uh my mom even she like on the phone with me she was like there's some superhero movie coming out and i really want to see it like i really don't like any of those movies but it's that one with the guy in the red pajamas it looks really good <laughs> I, was like, I was like oh yeah it looks like it's it's like tom hanks big movie and she's like yeah which was a movie that we watched a lot when I was growing up. Um, I think if I was to predict how it's going to do, I, I think that they purposefully did these early screenings because they were tracking it so low because there was not enough uh, momentum behind people yeah. wanting to see the movie. So yeah, this yeah. is the the perfect way to get people going because essentially what would have happened otherwise is you get the, the first weekend would have been low return but you would have had people seeing it and going out and telling other people it's worth seeing. Cause that's what really gets it is the word of mouth for a lot mm-hmm. of these things. So now they've avoided that and instead released it 
a week earlier, two weeks earlier, however early it is. And now people are already spreading that word of mouth. And now we have, you know, all of us here and everyone else that, that hears Luis talking about it for 15, 20 minutes, like is going to want to see it. And that's exactly what they were aiming for. So now I think that they should up their tracking for where they're going to hit as far as profits go. And it's going to be pretty successful um, as far as money goes, but hopefully this does not, um, the, like, I, I hope that it does make them keep doing this, mm. but I hope that it doesn't make them decide to keep doing the same, this over and over again. And then we get the oversaturation of stuff. And like, I, you know, I don't want to see five, movies of shazam where they're all the exact same thing or like they did shazam this way so then they decide to do harley quinn and then harley quinn winds up trying to be the same as this movie and not doing well mm. like that kind of stuff I, I like the idea that they're doing a you know aquaman was very much like uh reminded me of the mummy with brendan fraser those movies just underwater um and then you know this being you know what it is and then the upcoming joker film with joaquin phoenix being i don't know what the fuck it is but it's gonna be something different but it's like and then we got uh james gunn still doing the suicide squad as they're calling it we have a period piece batman coming up from matt reeves like every one of these movies is set to be very distinct mm. and that's what i think that they need to ride on is just making distinct movies instead of making movies that feel the same because they're trying to have a flavor and they're trying to blend it all together. Um, but regardless, I've been reading Yu-Gi-Oh lately and it's very good. <laughs> okay. <And laughs> I have a point to make. I, 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 have to, I, I do have to go though. I have to head out. Uh, I have to uh, drive like 40 minutes away. So I'm going to, be piecing out. Sorry, I didn't get to, to spend more time, and I, I, I'm sorry if Luis could most of this. You can see you, <laughs> I, you, Ryan. I will uh, hopefully be back soon, just schedule permitting, but uh, uh, I I might be able to, to get onto a morning schedule sooner than was originally planned, so that fingers crossed. Okay, good. <laughs> good to All see right. you, buddy. Bye, guys. Adios. I, I think Alex had it right when he said what sort of what Riley was alluding to is that they're letting um, uh, the individual directors mm. create their own individual um, vision and just let the individual movies stand for itself. Yeah. Not connect to a bunch of other stuff. Let the individual movie be its own individual, individual thing. and. I'm not going to bust on this guy's balls because he's had serious personal tragedies mm -hmm. in his life. And I just don't think he was right for the movies, but all those dark DC movies had one thing in common and that was Zack Snyder. And he was responsible for all those movies and they all had a dark undertone. Um, and he, he is the one thing that, tied them all together and he's not responsible for any of those movies anymore. And I don't think we have to worry uh, anymore because they're all in the hands of different directors now with their own visions and their own um, themes. And I mean, uh, Margot Robbie is in charge of that Birds of Prey, Birds right, of Prey one right. and she wants it to have a different tone and that's going to be it. And you already mentioned the Joaquin Phoenix movie and Riley said it, God knows what that's going to be, but it's going to be its own thing. Uh, so I don't, I don't think we have to worry about a dark undertone type of thing. And I don't think we have to worry about Shazam. You know, we're going to, we're not going to have to worry about Hoppy the bunny being a DC character movie type yeah. thing. They're all going to let these individual individuals do their own movies yeah. now. And I, I look, I think it's really interesting because it, it fits so well with DC that they're also different as well, right? Because like in terms of the comics history, like Marvel is deliberately like the comics is deliberately meant to be cohesive and fit together. Whereas DC is like this patchwork of, of characters. And it, it feels so weird, but almost kind of perfect that like, that's where the movies have ended up. That like Marvel's movies have all kind of got like, they all have different genres, but they all kind of have roughly the same kind of tone. And you can kind of know what to expect roughly going into a Marvel movie. Whereas yeah. DC is going to have like, 
like, you know, Wonder Woman is kind of like this gritty war film with like stylized action, but Shazam is like a teen comedy or like, sorry, comedy with heart and superpowers and like Aquaman is just like this insane fantasy. And it feels perfectly in line with like DC's comic brand that all yeah. these characters have their own kind of whatever. And then hopefully they'll manage to nail whenever the next Justice League or team up movie is, they'll be able to like put those together. But I think it's, it feels perfectly good for DC and DC's advantage over Marvel is that, or it was at least, um, people know their characters. Like people know Superman, people didn't know Iron Man as well, right? But you can just say like, like Batman, you can have a period Batman piece or a period Joker piece and people know enough about the surrounding um, like story to kind of just drop them in and you don't have to set it all up. Whereas I think like with Captain Marvel, like you have to have an origin story. You couldn't just say like, here's Captain Marvel, go away. Whereas you could have other DC cameos in um, like, Shazam, if they do have any, and people know exactly who those characters are, right? Yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree. I, I think it's you know, it's like you said, you you know what you're gonna get with a Marvel movie. Mm. I'm I'm gonna go into Endgame, and I'm excited to see Endgame, but for the most part, I know what I'm gonna get when I walk in. I know what the Marvel formula is, and I think most people know what the Marvel formula is at the end of the day. And you know, God bless them; it, it's worked for them for the past ten years. <laughs> um, you know, so, it obviously has. Um, but I, I, I am, as of right now, I'm way more excited for what's, for what DC is doing than yeah. I am for whatever Marvel's going to turn out next. Cause yeah, look, I, I get what you mean. And I think like, without sounding like too pretentious, like it's DC, at least at the moment or where it feels like it's heading, it's a bit more like auteur driven, like apart from maybe James Gunn doing Guardians of the Galaxy stuff, because they really feel like if you've seen other James Gunn movies, like they really feel like his voice. Like Marvel's kind of genius has been able to get like so many different directors to have a cohesive voice, but that's also its biggest weakness is that sometimes you just crave creativity. That's like, even if it doesn't always work, like it's, it's someone trying to say something or someone trying to do something different. And like you said, after like 21 movies, sometimes that feels a little bit, a little bit samey. And you like, even if someone doesn't succeed a hundred percent, it's really good to like, I think that's why people like Aquaman. Like it didn't really, like to me didn't really communicate anything deep necessarily, but James Wan had like a vision of like, I want fucking fish lasers flying over <laughs> the ocean and like really insane stuff. And because like he was clearly so invested in it himself in terms of making it look great, like people connect with that, even if it, you know, it's not like high art, but it's extremely enjoyable. It was, exactly. And that's, that's fine. It doesn't, not everything has to be the same thing. And I think that's why people like hopefully like said, we might take a little while longer to see this back with DC just because of the, the long lead time that we need on movies. But it's nice to kind of look forward to like DC doing kind of more interesting and varied things and realize they don't have to be like Marvel to get an audience. But I'll be interested to see how Shazam does in China because obviously like Aquaman made huge money in China. Oh, right. um, like, yeah, like Chinese like blockbusters, like they really like underwater blockbusters and like, like Aquaman felt to me like I've like I've seen quite a few Chinese blockbusters. Aquaman felt like a Chinese blockbuster. Like I wonder if the humor know. of Shazam mm. will translate to the humor yeah, in China. Yeah, that's that's what I'm really interested to see how it will do because I'm sure it will do very well in the US, but and probably like other Western countries. But I'll be interested to see how it does in China because like I don't think Warner Brothers expected Aquaman to do great in China, but it made like gangbusters money there. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why it's now like the highest grossing, like worldwide, the highest grossing DC film, not adjusted for inflation. There's like a lot of that came from China. Mm. So I'll be interested to see how Shazam goes there, given it's like slightly less universal in its, um, its topic, theoretically. A billion dollars. Jeez, Aquaman making a billion dollars. One billion dollars. Yeah, for Aquaman. Oh my God. <laughs> We're getting a fucking trench movie because of this. A trench movie. I know the trench. What a what a Z list <laughs> bunch <right>. of <laughs> characters. Yeah. What a time to oh, be alive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just I, I hope Warner Brothers keeps up with it. It seems like they've they're hiring horror directors <laughs> to film their stuff because uh, the guy who directed Shazam comes from a horror background. He did Lights Out and he did uh, the Annabelle, mo Annabelle movie that was actually really good. Uh, not the first one, the second one. Hmm. So I wonder if that's where that's where DC and Warner Brothers are going to start hedging their bets, where they're going to like come to James Wan and go, okay, so you've got your guys from this Conjuring universe that you're building up through all these films. Let's pull these guys 
and let's have them take a stab at it because you know mm. horror horror is difficult to do horror is very challenging and it's all about timing mm. and in a lot of ways horror can translate into comedy and it can translate into other films because you have to know how to time it right so i'm excited i mean in, in short i'm super excited for the future of dc um well, I, I think it's great to see this movie mm. now I think it's very bright, man. I think DC has finally started to hit their stride, and please God, let let this keep going because um, I'm really enjoying it, and it's a breath of fresh air for me. A nine and a half from you is a big number. Yeah, you something. throw those numbers around like manhole covers, man. <laughs> it is a big number for you. Oh man, it yeah. I mean, I I dug it. I dug it. I, I really did. You know. Um, and, and the audience did too. The audience that I was with, they, they loved it. They clapped, they, they teared up and yeah. yeah. That's the difference between you and me. I like to go to a theater where I'm the only one in the theater. <laughs> Dude, I, am getting, the I, am getting that way. I am getting that way now. We went to see us the other night and I fucking hated the audience that we were in. <laughs> I could not stand them. You know, it's one thing where you react to like scares in a movie and things like that doesn't bother me. You know, if you're reacting to scares, all right, cool. But I had the full hood experience in my movie theater. Don't go in there. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> uh, oh, it was just one lady in the corner. And towards the end of the film, the entire audience was turning on her. Where you heard the people in the audience go, shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, thanks, Make Havoc, for telling me that. I appreciate that. Thank you for telling me that. Yeah, there's two end credit scenes. Um, okay. First one is really good. And if you're a Shazam fan, you'll really dig it. Um, there were a lot of people that they had their heads scratching. <laughs> and I was just laughing in the theater as to what it was. Um, and you can see people pull out their phones after and go, well, what's this? Um, the second one is a really funny nod to other DC films. To another DC film that I'm not going to get into here. Well, this is why I like Alamo Draft House because they have a policy, a one strike policy. Oh. If you you can you complain about somebody, the manager comes and talks to him, they complain again, boom, they are out. Wow. And that's why my movie buddy and I only go to Alamo now. Oh my god. I I'm getting tired of it, man. I'm I'm really getting tired of it. Um, can I just say something I think very interesting is like when you were talking about like other engaging fans early, I think it sounds like Shazam is doing the whole engaging fans thing, right? Because I think the problem with, and not just DC, any kind of movie that's based on an existing property, when they try to do like doing right by the fans and it's done badly, it's like stuffing it full of lore and things like that. Like, oh, Warcraft is a great example. Like I went into Warcraft, I really wanted to enjoy it, but I've only played Warcraft 3 like a million years ago. And there's all this like fan service, but if you don't know, if you're not really immersed in it, you don't get it. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't make for a good movie just to kind of shove lore down people's throats. Whereas it seems like what they've done with Shazam is like they've made a good movie and they put references in there if you get it, that's great. But also what they're doing because it's like kind of a relatively unknown character in the mainstream, they're getting fans to kind of spread the good word on that rather than kind of saying like, you know, this movie is for the fans, but if you don't know what we're talking about, like you'll have no clue of understanding this movie. Like mm -hmm. you can go to your friends who might never have heard of Shazam and go on, well, hey, you've never heard of this guy before, but I've saw this movie and it was really good and I can tell you a little bit about it, but you'll still be able to go in and enjoy it without having to have read any of the comics. You went to see Warcraft? Yes. <laughs> God, you are such a nerd. I can't believe it. Warcraft. Well, I, I kind of hated it. It was uh, <laughs> <very> <laughs> good. Holy smoke. I really wanted to enjoy it, but I was just like, I so yay. <laughs> I smoke. Well, my girl, my girl, really girl my girl. infidel. I'm glad you tuned me <laughs> into it. My girl, oh, oh, yeah, uh, my, just real quick on the Warcraft thing. My girl and my cousin saw it, and to piggyback off of what you said, they loved it. Oh, that's because they spent hundreds of hours back in high school playing Warcraft, so they understood it. All right. So, yeah, I had, I had my friend like, with me who loved it, too, because he plays Warcraft. He's like, Alex, it's the thing. I'm like, uh, uh, no idea. <laughs> so you liked Infidel, Jess? Oh, yeah, I think it, it was a, a brilliant comic book. I can't wait to do a review on it. Um, it was, it, I will say, I'm, I'm going to talk about it tomorrow night on Omni Bros, but uh, 
It's probably one of the most politically charged books that I've ever read. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, just by dint of its subject matter, mm -hmm. um, it's the first time that you've had um, uh, a Muslim woman be the main protagonist and that the house was haunted by a xenophobic, Islamophobic ghost. And it was, um, I mean, it was the cultural hatred was blatant in it. It, it was a good, scary book, but the um, uh, the cultural ramifications of it were blatant and obvious. And um, I, I can see how some people won't dig it because, you know, you go to comic books to sort of escape from politics and this one hits you over the head with it. But it is still a brilliant book. I just, I, I can't thank you enough for recommending it. I, I just think it was tops. Awesome. I'm happy to hear that, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, it's only, what, like four issues? Four or five issues? It's a short read. Yeah, it was a short read. I read it this morning in an hour. Yeah, you could you can knock it out in about an hour. Um, very powerful stuff. And yeah. some of the images in there are haunting. Like, it's genuinely pretty frightening some of, frightening some of the stuff that's drawn in there. Yeah, make havoc. Thank you for watching my last review. I appreciate your support. Always appreciate your support. So uh, we're coming up on 1.30. You're about ready to put this thing to bed. If you want to get your collected editions for up to 50% off, InStockTrades.com is the place to go. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. Every quarter, there's an OmniBros Live discount. If you order $50 or more in an order, you get free shipping in the United States. You can't beat that, buddy. Absolutely the best customer service around. I cannot stress that enough, how wonderful they are at InStock Trades with their customer service. Fabulous packaging. I just got a huge package yesterday filled with packing peanuts. And that's not a knock. I needed the peanuts. <laughs> I needed them because I'm doing some shipping of my own. And that that book came in perfect condition. So their packaging is second to none. That's in stocktrades.com. Luis, where can they find you on the um, internet? Uh, you can find me at ComicsGuide101 on Facebook and Twitter and on YouTube, where about every six months I upload a video. Um, <laughs> and you still got like 12,000 subscribers. Yeah, and it's still yeah, growing. More than that. I think I'm about to hit 13. Wow. Yeah, I, I actually get a check from, from YouTube about every three months now. <laughs> Jesus, you rap bastard. <laughs> Yeah, for not doing anything, I'm getting a check from YouTube because people are clicking on my videos and watching. I'm like, eh, it's not bad. I get a hundred bucks like every three months. God damn! <laughs> I've been doing it for a while, man. Yeah, you have. You've been at it for six or seven years, haven't you? Yeah, it's been about that long. Yeah. Um, and Sherlock, you mm. don't have an internet presence, but you have. I don't. Not on YouTube, at least, because I, I I find it hard to to find the time to kind of do things um, in terms of reviews and things like that. But I'm definitely on. Um, I'm on the o Otaku Farm on um, Otaku's Farm, as we say online, and I'll be back in the main group. But I just I left um because I've been traveling around for work the last couple of months, so. I only get to check my Facebook every now and then. I didn't want the feed to be right. extremely extremely clogged um but you guys will see me again on the main group in a in a couple of weeks so but yeah i'm i'm always happy to hop um hop on other people's channels and it's been <laughs> and great as well it's been great having you it's, we've really enjoyed having you on yeah. it's been nice to be in the same time zone because normally <laughs> like this time in australia is like oh god no it's like 4 a.m in the morning or something so it's been it's really hard to kind of well this has been a blast so having you it's been great and I'm Omnidog on YouTube. I have Omnidog's Vault. Yesterday I put up a video I would love for you all to go see. It's called Why the Last Man Omnibus? DC, here are some better, here are some, uh, better ideas. It's my uh, attempt to contact DC and give them better ideas for omnibuses. So if you guys could all go to Omnidog's Vault and check out the... Why the Last Man Omnibus DC? Here's some better ideas video. I would appreciate it. Uh, I'm also on uh, Instagram 
OmniDogs underscore vault, where I also posted a link to that particular video. Uh, I think it's one of my more more fun. Is that a word? Fun, it's my fun, fun, yeah. my more fun. It's a fun video. So it's <laughs> something I usually do. I'm <laughs> failing in the talking grammar part here, but you got this, buddy. Don't fall apart now. We're almost home. Yeah, right. I'm 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 almost got it. So. Uh, on behalf of my fellow co-hosts and my special guest, Sherlock, that's it. Please like and subscribe to our channel, The Omni Bros. We'll see you tomorrow night when we have Hall's Previews and Reads. Peace and love. Peace and love. Go see Shazam. Go see Shazam. <laughs>